Hi guys, this is Ramon Goose from The Guitar Show. Today we're going to be looking at the guitars of George Harrison. George was born in Liverpool on 25th of February 1943. In the 1950s, he started listening to Carl Perkins, Lonnie Donegan and Elvis Presley. When George reached 14 years old, he developed an interest in learning to play the guitar. In 1956, George got his first guitar, which was an Egmond 105. This model was also known as an Egmond Toledo and it was marketed in the UK by Rossetti Guitars. Rossetti actually rebadged these guitars, so this was also known as a Rossetti 276 model. He purchased this guitar from a friend at school for three pounds. Within a few months, George explained to his mother how now he needed a new guitar, a better guitar, one that cost 30 pounds, and that was an electric. The Hofner was a top of the line, single cutaway, cello style model with a sunburst finish and a compensator tailpiece. George's first band was called The Quarrymen. It was a skiffle group founded by school friend John Lennon in 1956. George joined the group in 1958 on Paul McCartney's recommendation. Soon after, Harrison traded his big Hofner President model acoustic archtop jazz guitar with aftermarket pickups installed for a Hofner Club 40, his first proper electric guitar. Harrison later remembered of his first Hofner acoustic jazz guitar. I got what they called a cello style F hole single cutaway called a Hofner, which is like a German version of a Gibson. I got a pickup and stuck it on, Harrison continued. I soon got fed up with it and did a straight swap for a Club 40. I thought it was the most fantastic guitar ever. Harrison stated he swapped his Hofner president with a member of the swinging blue jeans to acquire his Club 40. Ray Innes of that band remembers the trade. The Club 40 that George got was originally mine, Innes confirmed. We had our residency on Tuesdays at the Cavern, and I remember we did the swap there. I swapped it for his acoustic Hofner, which was a sunburst with F-holes. I haven't got it now, because at the time, who thought the Beatles would be so famous? In those early days, we used to get fed up with guitars very quickly, so we'd swap and change a lot. So whilst performing with the Quarrymen, they made some self-made recordings of the Buddy Holly covers. Then they moved from Skiffle towards rock and roll, causing all but John, Paul and George to leave, and in 1960, they changed the name of the band for the final time to the Beatles. The Hofner Club 40 guitar was a small single cutaway hollow bodied instrument built with a spruce top, maple back and sides, and it was in natural blonde wood finish with a black body binding. The short scale guitar has a 22 fret neck with an unbound rosewood fingerboard with dot inlays and is joined to the body at the 14th fret. The guitar has a Hofner trapeze bridge style tailpiece, an adjustable floating bridge, a shell-covered pickguard, one single-coil black bar pickup in the neck position, and an oval-style control panel with volume and tone teacup-style knobs. Headstock is fitted three on a side tuning pegs and features a horizontal Hofner headstock logo with three vertical dot inlays. The back of the headstock is stamped with the serial number 244. In 1966, the Star Club in Hamburg held the Beat Band Battle. The winning band would receive a record deal with the Star Club label and as a special prize, an autographed Beatles guitar once owned by George Harrison. This was in fact Harrison's Hofner Club 40. The guitar was won by Frank Dorstel, singer and guitarist of the 1960s German band Faces. Frank still currently owns this guitar. In 1959, George went to Hesse's Music in Liverpool on 20th of November looking for a new guitar, especially the Stratocaster. But the closest he could find in the shop was a three pickup Futurama, originally called a Gracioso Resonate, manufactured by Delicia Company in Czechoslovakia and renamed by Selma, who imported them into the UK. The price was a very expensive £55, a small fortune in those days. George can be seen playing this guitar on the Scotland tour between May and June 1960, and he also brought it along for the Beatles' first trip to Hamburg later that year. And during their second Hamburg trip, he used it on their first proper recording session. You can hear this guitar on the track from 1961 called Cry for a Shadow. In a 1987 guitar player interview, George states, The Futurama was a dog to play. It had the worst action. It had a great sound though, and a real good way of switching in the three pickups with all the combinations. Although George's mother signed the higher purchase agreement, records show that Brian Epstein, the Beatles manager, eventually paid off the account. So what happened to the Futurama? Well, in 1964, Harrison gave it to Beat International magazine to raffle off, but the winner decided he'd rather have the money 
So publisher Sean O'Mahony paid the man and kept the Futurama, and he still has it. George's next guitar was a Gretsch PX6128 Duo Jet, a late 1957 model, which featured a solid body, cloud inlays, a big speed vibrato, black finish with silver pickguard, and two dearming pickups. George found this guitar through a member of a band called The Delicados, who got a tip from a taxi driver. The driver, Evan Haywood, was a former merchant seaman who was planning on emigrating and had decided to sell the Gretsch duo jet he'd bought at Sam Goody's in New York in 1957. God knows how I managed to get £75 together, Harrison recalls in his anthology book. It seemed like a fortune. I remember having it in my inside pocket thinking, I hope nobody mugs me. Harrison used this guitar on all the early singles, the Please Please Me sessions and innumerable shows in Hamburg at the Cavern, the Caspar and throughout Britain until late spring 1963. George gave this instrument to his friend in Hamburg, Klaus Vormann. Klaus actually owned the guitar for 20 years and then returned it back to George Harrison. And that was sometime in late 1985 or 86. Harrison had his guitar tech Alan Rogan do all the restoration work on it and he put it to good use on the album Cloud Nine in 1987. In 1962, both Harrison and Lennon went to Rushworth and Dreeper's music store in Liverpool and bought two 62 Gibson J160E guitars, basically electrified jumbo acoustics. Harrison used this guitar throughout the Sgt Pepper sessions. In 1963, George borrowed a Gretsch Jet Firebird for a couple of months whilst his Dewey Jet was getting repaired. He actually liked the guitar but apparently decided not to keep it. This model was initially made for Bo Diddley, and here you can see him using it at the Cavern Club. This next guitar is a 1962 Gretsch 6122 Country Gentleman, and this was picked up by George in 63. It features a walnut finish, gold hardware, neoclassical inlays, dial-up mutes, Gretsch Bigsby vibrato, and two Filtertron pickups. It was purchased for £234 at Sound City in London. This guitar tended to be used as a backup to an identical one, which we'll talk about in a minute. This Country Gen unfortunately was destroyed in December 65 when the Beatles limo bound for Glasgow um, hit a bump and the actual guitar which was strapped to the outside of the car fell off and broke into pieces. So in May 1963 the first country gent went to Sound City in London for repairs and Sound City gave Harrison a, um, an identical country gent. Both guitars were identical except for the mutes which were flip up rather than dial up. George actually came to prefer the second one. In this photo from November 1963 both Gretsch guitars can be seen. In this photo, George could be seen playing a Mayton Master Sound MS500 guitar. Before George took his country gen into Sound City for repairs, he went to the guitar shop Barrett's of Manchester and borrowed this Australian solid body guitar. So he used his guitar for a few shows during June and July. After these shows, he returned it to the guitar shop. Okay, the next guitar is another Gretsch. It's a Gretsch 6119 Tennessee. This was either made in 1962 or 63. George acquired this guitar in 1963. Its features were double pickups, single cutaway, type 2 model with painted on F holes. George was first spotted playing this guitar in 1963 on the Christmas shows and later at the Carnegie Hall. It was used on the for sale sessions and for tours, concerts and TV appearances well into 1965. You can also spot this guitar on the opening sequence for the film Help and it was also used on the first Shea Stadium concert that August. It disappeared for a while and then resurfaced on the Sgt. Pepper sessions. Another interesting guitar that uh, George added to his armory in 1963 was a Jose Ramirez Guitarra de Estudio. And this is a beautiful classical. You can actually see this on the YouTube clip of And I Love Her. And it's got a great sound on the actual Hard Day's Night um, album. You know, it's a really, really cool, beautiful sounding classical guitar. And to continue the guitar set George obtained in 1963, the next guitar is a 62 Rickenbacker 425 Fireglow Solid Body. The serial number was BH439. Harrison picked this guitar up for $400 in September 1963 at Fenton's Music Store in Mount Vernon, Illinois. This guitar originally came in Fireglow Red, but was painted black by the store owner at Fenton's. George actually requested this so that it matched John's Rickenbacker. He used this guitar up until early 1964. In 1964, George met with Rickenbacker president F.C. Hall at the Plaza Hotel in New York, who had arranged with Brian Epstein to show the Beatles some of the new instruments he had produced. 
One of these instruments in particular was an electric 12 string that he just developed called the Rickenbacker 360 12. It was first offered to John Lennon, but John suggested that George might like it. Harrison started using this guitar as soon as the band returned to England. In particular, he used it for songs such as I Should Have Known Better, followed by I Call Your Name and A Hard Day's Night on April the 16th, 1964. Harrison actually started using this guitar again in 1987 for his solo album Cloud Nine. He played it on the track Fish on the Sand. One of the really cool features of this Rickenbacker 12 string guitar is the way that the tuners are aligned. This makes it so that it's easier to know which string you're actually tuning. The 360 12 was the first ever 12 string that Rickenbacker produced and the one that was given to George Harrison was actually the second one made. George actually received a second 360 12 Rickenbacker guitar from a radio station called WDGY. George's second Rickenbacker 12 string got lost shortly after the Candlestick Park concert on August the 29th, 1966. This new model 36012 had rounded cutaways and checkered binding on the back. Five chrome top control knobs and an R tailpiece. When George received this guitar, he retired his first one from stage performances. The first recording in which this guitar was used was If I Needed Someone, recorded on October the 16th, 1965. In 1965, whilst the Beatles were recording at Abbey Road, Lennon and Harrison decided to dispatch their roadie Mel Evans to get a couple of strats because Brian Epson decided that he was going to pick up the bill if they were identical. Evans came back with two 1961 rare blue colour Stratocasters. These were first used on the song Nowhere Man for the Rubber Soul sessions. They were used regularly after that. George used this Stratocaster in 1967 on the famous All You Need Is Love satellite broadcast. Harrison gave his Strat a psychedelic paint job and nicknamed it Rocky. He used his wife Patty's sparkly green nail varnish as well on it. Later in 1967, it featured prominently in the I Am The Warrus scene in the Magical Mystery Tour TV special. In his solo years, Harrison actually used it for slide guitar and used it on the track Free As A Bird. This guitar featured a rosewood fingerboard and its original colour was Daphne Blue. There's some really nice bird's eye maple figuring on the back of the neck here in the photo. Check out George with this beautiful Gibson ES345 TD tobacco sunburst. This could be a 63, 64 or 65 guitar. It's been reported that the band The Moody Blues loaned this guitar to George Harrison after his country gent was smashed on the roadway. And there's some other photos that show him using this guitar on the December British tour. After that, there's no sighting of this guitar again. You can see George playing this guitar on the Weekend Work It Out video. In early 1966, both Harrison and Lennon obtained Epiphone E230 TDs, otherwise known as Casino guitars. Paul McCartney had actually got his one before. And just like Paul McCartney's one, George Harrison featured a Bixby vibrato. He used this guitar regularly in the studio and on a tour throughout the Sgt. Pepper sessions. And it appears in many of the Beatles performances, including the Hello Goodbye promo. George Harrison said of his casino, John and I scraped off the varnish of our Epiphone casinos and they became much better guitars. I think that works on a lot of guitars. If you take the paint off and varnish off and get to the bare wood, it seems to sort of breathe. Next up is a 1964 Gibson SG standard guitar, serial number 227666. George acquired this guitar in 1966. He used it as his main guitar during the revolver sessions and it remained one of his favorite guitars through into 1968. Eventually George gave this guitar to Pete Ham of Badfinger. Badfinger were an English group that was signed to Apple. And for those of you who don't know, they actually wrote the song Without You, which was covered by Nielsen. Whilst Badfinger was signed to Apple Records, George Harrison actually acted as producer. This particular Gibson was equipped with a Maestro Vibralo Lyle style cover. It featured on the promo film for Lady Madonna and also Paperback Writer. In 1968, George acquired a 1957 Gibson Les Paul Standard. This started life as a gold top and it was owned by John Sebastian of The Love and Spoonful. It then found its way to Rick Deringer of the McCoys, who took this well-used guitar back to Gibson and had them refinish it in cherry red. The paint was the same clear red finish that was used on the SG style guitars. But after that, Deringer didn't really fancy it anymore, so he traded it at Dan Armstrong's Manhattan shop. Soon after, Eric Clapton walked in and bought it, and in 1968, Clapton gave it to Harrison. Harrison dubbed the red guitar Lucy after redhead comedian Lucy Ball. A few weeks later, Harrison picked Clapton up on his way to Abbey Road, 
where Harrison had the guitar and a Marshall amp waiting for Clapton to add his solo to the track While My Guitar Gently Weeps. Harrison also used this guitar in the Revolution promo video and on the sessions for Let It Be and Abbey Road, most notably on the track Something. The next guitar that George Harrison acquired was a beautiful Fender Rosewood Telecaster, custom made for him. In 1968, Fender's marketing department wanted to add a new solid body Rosewood Telecaster and a Stratocaster to its line and felt that a good way to jumpstart the instrument's popularity would be to present the prototype of the Telecaster to George Harrison and the prototype of the Stratocaster to Jimi Hendrix. Fender decided that a safe course of action would be to produce two prototypes of each the Rosewood Telecaster and the Rosewood Stratocaster and then select the best to give to the star musicians. The bodies for the guitars were made with a thin layer of maple sandwiched between a solid rosewood top and back. After this, a clear polyurethane finish was applied. George played this guitar on the Let It Be sessions and on the rooftop concert. On December the 1st, 1969, George Harrison and Rigo Starr attended a performance by the American act Delaney and Bonnie at the London Royal Albert Hall. The next day, Harrison joined the band on stage and afterwards he presented his rosewood telecaster to the guitarist Delaney Bramlett. Interestingly, Bramlett put up the guitar for auction in 2003. The winning bidder paid $434,000. Although the identity of the West Coast collector was not revealed, rumours persisted that it was actually a person who was apparently bidding on behalf of George Harrison's widow, Olivia Harrison, who now owns the guitar again. In 1969, Harrison acquired a vintage Sunburst Gibson J200 Jumbo acoustic guitar. This guitar featured a flowery pickguard. And rumours are that this is the same guitar that Bob Dylan is seen holding on the cover of his 1969 album, Nashville Skyline. He used this guitar for songs such as For You Blue, Here Comes the Sun, While My Guitar Gently Weeps, Long 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 and Piggies. George used a blonde Gibson J200 to compose most of the songs for his solo album, All Things Must Pass. This next guitar is a Zimitis Lotus 12 string, made by Tony Zimitis. Dubbed by Clapton as Ivan the Terrible and used on the 1960 album Blind Faith, this Tony Zemitis 12-string custom guitar was subsequently loaned to George Harrison, who used it on the recording My Sweet Lord. Here we can see Harrison with the six-string Zemitis acoustic guitar. This was a custom guitar he had Zemitis make because he wanted something small enough to take as a carry-on on plane trips. This guitar was used on his 1974 solo tour. Okay, next we're going to detail a few Stratocasters that George actually owned. This first Stratocaster was a Sunburst 50 style Stratocaster and it's quite significant for its Dark Horse logo sticker, which you can see here in the photos. I'm actually going to read you a George Harrison quote where he details um, a number of his Stratocasters. I don't have a whole lot of Strats. I've got a Sunburst one, which Eric Clapton gave me quite a few years ago. There was one which was stripped down to the wood that I gave to Spike Milligan. He was at my house one day with Peter Sellers. Peter was playing the drums, Spike was playing the piano, and I was playing the guitar. Then Spike got off the piano and wanted to play the guitar, so I plugged him into the Strat through a little champ amplifier. Oh, I haven't played for 30 years, but he picked it up and sounded like Django Reinhardt or something. And I thought, well, that's good. So when he left, I put it in the case and put it and the champ in Peter Sellers' boot and told him, when you drop Spike off, give this to him. So he uses it in his show now. It's a Stratocaster from the concept for Bangladesh. In this photo here, we can see George Harrison at a Prince's Trust concert in 1987 with Eric Clapton in the background. The guitar he's playing is a Fender JV, or Japanese Vintage Export Squire Strat. At the same concert, George can be seen playing a Washburn E20 acoustic guitar. Another Stratocaster that George owned was a 1987 Torino Red Fender Eric Clapton Stratocaster. In this photo, George Harrison is playing a Gretsch Chet Atkins on the Rockabilly sessions, Carl Perkins and Friends. This guitar was given to him by his wife Olivia. The session was at Limehouse Studios in London on 21st of October 1985. Here, George can be seen using this Telecaster style guitar made by Fritz Brothers Guitars. This model was called the Roy Buchanan Bluesmaster. George Harrison and Gary Moore were good friends, and after Gary Moore saw this guitar, he ordered one for himself and featured it on his 1993 Blues Alive album. Another interesting custom made guitar that Harrison owned was a Hamburg guitar. George acquired this guitar around 1992 and he's quoted as saying, I like this guitar a lot. He's just a small manufacturer, but it's a very, very well-made instrument and he does it all himself. George used this guitar on the recording and video of the Beatles song titled Real Love from the Beatles Anthology 2. 
Okay, guys, that's all from me. Thanks a lot for watching. If you made it this far, then don't forget to subscribe, share, like, whatever. And please, you know, check out some videos because we're going to be doing a lot more in the future. So all the best. God bless. Hasta la vista.